Hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar about reaction analysis from Mettler Toledo AutoChem. Today's webinar is part three in a series about the use of real-time in situ FTIR in academia to support research for the advancement of the understanding of organic chemistry. First, I will give a brief introduction about the reason why real-time in situ infrared monitoring can be valuable for research in organic chemistry, and then we'll give a brief introduction on the method of measurement. I'll then review three recent publications from academia where REACT IR was used to support the research effort. While reviewing the publications, I will do my best to capture the essence of the research and the role that in situ monitoring played in supporting the research. For full details, please refer to the original article. All of the reference are shown. I assume that most of you are now familiar with REACT IR. In case you are not, REACT IR is a dedicated real time in situ reaction analysis system. It provides the capability to monitor reactions under actual reaction conditions without having to interfere with the chemistry to get analytical information. This means that any reactions that have components that are sensitive to oxygen, water vapor, or to changes in temperature can be monitored effectively, eliminating any associated problems with taking and working up samples for offline analysis. Spectra are collected automatically as a function of time, typically every one or two minutes. However, spectra can be collected as fast as every second. This results in an extremely comprehensive set of concentration information for all key components, which allows not only for the reaction initiation and endpoint determination, but also gives the capability to detect transient reactive intermediate species as well. In academia, this information is commonly used to understand reaction kinetics and to elucidate mechanism and pathway. I will cover the method of measurement briefly. For those that want more detail, please visit the reaction analysis page on mt.com. The link will be provided at the end of this presentation. The technique that we use in our sampling technology is attenuated total reflectance, also known as ATR. ATR works on the principle of Snell's law, where each reflection is actually an interrogation point of the sample matrix. At each interrogation point, the infrared pen radiation penetrates into the reaction matrix only on the order of approximately 2 micrometers. Therefore, the path length is equal to the depth of penetration times the number of reflections. Since the infrared radiation only penetrates into the matrix such a short distance, bubbles and solids do not affect the measurement. In most cases, the system will not be able to observe the solids in the sample matrix. This is quite different from transmission-based techniques where bubbles and particulates will cause interferences. In essence, the REACT IR is sampling the liquid phase of the reaction mixture. With REACT IR data, we will plot absorbance and not transmittance. Why? Absorbance is proportional to concentration via Beer's law. Although A, absorptivity, and B, path length, are functions of a few variables, we generally assume them to be constant. When a peak absorbance is plotted versus time, we are looking at concentration versus time. With the specificity of the mid-infrared, a peak absorbance is associated with a particular functional group, and we can therefore trend how the concentration of multiple species change with time in a reaction mixture. The enabling technology of the comp probe design is a fundamental factor in the success of the REACT IR. The comp probe was introduced in 1994 and has been used for over 15 years now with thousands of probes in daily use at scientific institutions around the globe. The design shown to the right has a zinc selenide focusing and support element that focuses the infrared energy into the ATR sensor. The zinc selenide element does not come in contact with the chemistry as it is inside the metal housing of the probe. The only wetted materials are the standard alloy C276 metal housing a gold seal, and the ATR sensor. 
The most universal and widely used ATR material is diamond. It is an extremely hard and chemically resistant material. However, diamond does absorb in the mid infrared between about 2,250 and 1,950 wave numbers. If you need to monitor in that region for components such as metal carbonyls, isocyanates, or nitriles, then we have sensor materials of silicon or cumic zirconia available. In addition to the gold seal, a Teflon seal is also available, and many different types of probe housings can be used alternatively to alloy C276, including, among others, tantalum, titanium, and other alloys. The temperature and pressure specifications for the comp probes are dependent on the specific probe type, but the full temperature range is minus 80 to 400 C, and the pressure range is vacuum to 300 bar. The development of the latest generation of REACT IRs has been focused on reducing the instrument size and software complexity and developing a range of fiber optic based flexible probe technologies. The REACT IR IC10 pictured here was specifically developed to appeal to the organic chemists and has become a general purpose research tool in the lab. The system has a very small footprint, about the size of a shoebox. Implementation is not much more difficult than inserting a thermocouple into a flask. Another major advancement for the organic chemist is ICIR software. The software is wizard base, which leads a person through the setup of an experiment. Here you also see a screenshot of the ICIR software. All the windows are linked so that any changes made in one window are reflected in all the other windows. ICIR's real-time features allow you not only to automate collection of spectra as a function of time, but to compare any spectra from the reaction file and to trend any functional groups. In fact, any treatment, data treatment, can be invoked in real-time, including solvent subtraction, advanced math functions, and quantitative prediction, among others. It is important to remember that this is mid-infrared spectroscopy, so that any functional group changes active in the mid-infrared can be monitored for concentration changes in real time. Our first literature review comes from Paul Charpentier's research group at the University of Western Ontario in London, Ontario, Canada. It was published in January of this year, 2009, in the Journal of Industrial and Engineering Chemical Research. Ethylene vinyl acetate, or EVA, is found in a wide variety of consumer materials. It is an elastomeric material that can be processed like a thermoplastic. Uses for EVA include hot melt adhesives as an additive in cling wrap that provides the cling and in foams for padding equipment used in ski boots, boxing gloves, and the like. A recent use of EVA is as an encapsulation matrix for silicon cells in photovoltaics. It is typically produced in a continuous high-pressure reactor between ethylene and vinyl acetate monomers. Operating pressures can be on the order of 50,000 psi, which is about 3,500 bar. This process involves the use of volatile organic solvent and requires the workup of the product to remove residual monomers. The process can also result in the undesired production of low molecular weight polymers that are highly branched. The use of supercritical CO2 as a solvent has many potential advantages. It has been touted as a potential green alternative to organic solvents due to its abundance, cost, non-flammability, and low toxicity. In addition, the ability to tune the properties with a co-solvent can enhance or depress reactivity as desired. In this paper, the monomer reactivity ratios were determined in an effort to obtain information regarding the potential use of supercritical CO2 as a solvent for the production of EVA. The experimental setup is similar to the one shown above in the picture. Copolymerizations were carried out using a 100 mil stainless steel high pressure reactor from PAR Industries. Pressure, temperature, and stirring were controlled via an attached controller unit. A special ultra high pressure DICOMP Sentinel probe was attached to a REACT IR 4000 system. 
This probe is made of alloy C276, gold and diamond, and is rated for a pressure of 4,500 psi, or about 310 bar. Vinyl acetate and initiator were charged into the reactor, and then after sealing and purging with argon, ethylene and CO2 were charged via syringe pumps. Typical reactions were run for only about 30 minutes, then the reactor was cooled with the resulting polymer used for offline analysis. The functional group specificity of the mid-infrared typically allows for the monitoring of multiple species at the same time. Vinyl acetate monomer concentration was tracked by the decrease in the 1648 peak. Copolymer bands appear at 2929, 1737, and 1241 wave numbers. No clear peaks from ethylene could be observed. A calibration curve for vinyl acetate concentration was created using offline NMR results and the peak ratio of 1737 to 2929 wave numbers. Knowing the monomer feed compositions and the copolymer compositions derived from the calibration curve, the reactivity ratios can then be determined with known equations. Please see the reference directly for additional detail. Reactivity ratios were calculated and compared using two methods, nonlinear least squares and Kalantudos. These two methods gave very similar results as shown in the table. Offline NMR was used for one set of reactions in order to compare to the in situ IR method. As can be seen, the results are quite different and the errors are larger. The authors attribute this difference to the fact that there are likely much higher monomer conversions in the samples used for NMR analysis. Only the first few minutes of the in situ IR data was used for the reactivity ratio calculations as it had been shown in the literature that low monomer conversions, less than 2%, provide the best results. This illustrates one key advantage of an in situ measurement like React IR. It provides an instantaneous measurement of reactor composition changes under these high pressure and low conversion conditions. The use of nonpolar supercritical CO2 as a solvent provides increased reactivity for vinyl acetate monomer and a lower operating pressure versus traditional manufacturing conditions. Copolymers with higher VA content can provide new polymers with improved elastomeric properties such as softness and transparency. These properties may be required for the next generation of solar cells and medical devices. The second literature review comes from Kurohashi et al at the Graduate School of Engineering of Kyoto University in Kyoto, Japan. It was published in December of 2008 in the Journal of the American Chemical Society. This paper is a compelling illustration of the power of in situ FTIR to better understand reaction mechanism and determine the key influencing factors. It features an innovative insertion of an alkyne into phthalic anhydride catalyzed by nickel, a particularly potent transition metal. The addition triggers the expulsion of carbon monoxide and isocumarin 3AA is obtained. React IR was used for continuous monitoring of reaction components, allowing, in this example, to benefit from instant feedback when changing reaction conditions. A preliminary investigation showed that the reaction of phthalic anhydride and alkyne 2A with the nickel catalyst doesn't yield any significant amount of isocumarin 3AA in the presence of zinc chloride, where it gives 96% yield in the presence of zinc chloride. In situ IR spectral analysis confirmed that without zinc chloride, the reaction resulted in gradual consumption of static anhydride with no product formation. Interestingly, isocumarin 3AA was formed upon addition of zinc chloride even when zinc chloride was added after phthalic anhydride had started disappearing. Those observations were made by monitoring the decrease of the carbonyl stretch of phthalic anhydride at 1861 wave numbers 
and the increase of the carbonyl vibration belonging to isocumarin 3AA at 1735 wave numbers. Monitoring the variation of absorbance at these wavelengths is equivalent to monitoring the relative concentration of phthalic anhydride and isocumarin 3AA as the reaction progresses. As can be seen on these two graphs, although the phthalic anhydride concentration starts to decrease right from the beginning, isocumarin 3AA appears only upon addition of zinc chloride, whether this addition is done at the beginning of the reaction or after 12 minutes. This observation implies that zinc chloride is involved during the reductive elimination step where it plays a critical role. Reacti are helped in obtaining this critical clue about reaction mechanism thanks to its ability to monitor the concentration of reaction components in real time. Changes can be made to reaction conditions while getting instant feedback about their impact on reaction outcome. The third literature review comes from the Submaranian et al. from the University of Kansas Department of Chemical and Petroleum Engineering in Lawrence, Kansas and from Washington University's Chemical Reaction Engineering Laboratory in St. Louis, Missouri. While this article is not as recent as the others, I chose it because it is a good example for the use of in situ FTIR in a chemical engineering research laboratory. This paper shows how REACT IR is a versatile experimental tool for investigating mass transfer coefficients for carbon monoxide and hydrogen transport in organic media as well as for the in situ monitoring of catalytic reactions. In this case, the induction periods observed during one octene hydroformulation are investigated, implicating that mass transfer limitation could be a causative factor for the occurrence of the induction periods. Hydroformulation is one of the largest volume industrial homogeneous reactions using organometallic catalysts. Current industrial processes for higher olefin hydroformulation are performed homogeneously in organic solvents with cobalt-based catalysts. Compared to rhodium-based catalysts, cobalt catalysts are inexpensive but have significantly lower activities and selectivities and are therefore more energy intensive, requiring temperatures in the range of 140 to 200 degrees C and pressures from 50 to 300 bar. Moreover, the recovery and regeneration of cobalt catalysts during higher olefin hydroformulation are expensive and tedious. Also, the homogen this process can often be limited by the availability of syngas in the reaction phase. Recently, CO2 expanded liquids, known as CXLs, have been shown to be promising media for performing, performing higher olefin hydroformulation under relatively mild conditions. CXL is a compressible liquid mixture generated by condensing subcritical CO2 into an organic solvent. By varying the CO2 composition, a continuum of liquid media is generated and the properties of this media can be adjusted by tuning the operating pressure. A large amount of CO2 favors the syngas solubility and the presence of polar organic solvents facilitates moderate metal catalyst solubility. Hydroformulation of one octene was investigated using a 50 mil high pressure autoclave reactor equipped with REACT IR and an in situ ATR probe. The actual equipment is shown on the left. An example of a 50 mil jacketed autoclave modified to accept a sentinel probe and the associated sentinel probe are shown on the upper right. The figure on the lower right shows a schematic of the experimental setup. Mixing is provided by a magnetic stirrer with a maximum agitation rate of 1700 RPM. Pressure and temperature are monitored by a LabVIEW data acquisition system and controlled with a PAR 4840 controller. Syngas is introduced from a gas reservoir which is equipped with a pressure regulator and a pressure transducer. The pressure regulator located at the exit of the reservoir is used to admit syngas and maintain a constant total pressure in the reactor. The pressure transducer monitors the total pressure in the reservoir, which drops due to syngas consumption in the reaction. The ATR probe placed at the bottom of the reactor monitors composition 
and concentration profiles of various species in the liquid phase. A probe with a silicon sensor, known as a SICOMP, was used so that metal carbonyls in the region of 1950 to 1900 wave numbers could be monitored. The author sought to better understand the causative factors underlying the induction period through a complement of reactor modeling and experimental techniques. A model for the two-phase batch hydroformulation reactor was developed incorporating mass transfer, kinetics, and phase equilibria to study the effect of mass transfer and catalyst activation rate on the induction period observed. The gas phase at high pressure is described using Peng-Robinson equation of state to account for the non-ideality in the gas phase. Complementary experiments in a stirred autoclave reactor equipped with a react IR were used to validate the cause of the induction period predicted by the model. Various kinetic models have been proposed to fit the available experimental data. Most of these models express the rate in the general form shown above. The fitted values of parameters m and n depend on the, the substrates. These empirical models, however, do not provide a fundamental understanding of the effects of various parameters on reactive performance and scale-up. In this article, the detailed kinetic scheme proposed by Evans et al. in 1968 is used along with some of the side reactions commonly observed in hydroformulation studies. The various steps of the kinetic scheme are summarized in the table above. In step 1, the catalyst is activated by hydrogenation. Steps through through five represent the propagation steps. Step two is assumed to be the fastest in the kinetic scheme, and the aldehyde is produced in step four. Step six represents one octane hydrogenation to octane and occurs in parallel. Step seven leads to the deactivation of the rhodium complex, and step eight depicts the isomeration reaction that also occurs in parallel. The figure above shows the effect of Domkuhler number, I'll call it DA, on the dimensionless concentration profiles of one octene and no nano as the reaction progresses. Because the fastest reaction time scale is used to non-dimensionalize the real time, the mass transfer effects are observed at significantly high DA. DA equal 1 depicts the kinetic controlled region since mass transfer is faster than the fastest reaction, which guarantees that mass transfer time scale is smaller than all other reaction time scales in the reaction scheme. At higher DA, mass transfer is slower than the fastest reaction, but it can still be faster than the slower reactions in the kinetic scheme. Hence, only small differences can be observed between the profiles at DA equals 1 and 1000. Increase in the DA further leads to larger mass transfer effects suggesting that the mass transfer time scale is larger than one or more rate limiting steps. The prolonged induction period observed in the experiment study is also clearly predicted in the mass transfer controlled regime at larger DA when mass transfer limitations are large. The predicted induction time increases significantly as the mass transfer limitation increases. This is because of the reduced hydrogen availability in the liquid phase as the DA increases. Also, for the non-hydrogenated catalyst used, the induction time is small but non-zero even in the kinetic controlled re regime of DA equals to 1, which is caused because of kin kinetic limitation in step 1. Therefore, the catalyst initiation step might have a role to play on the observed induction period as well. This figure on the left shows the effect of varying the scaled constant for the catalyst hydrogenation step, K1, on the dimensionless 1 octane concentration profile. The simulations with varying K1 are at a low Domkuhler constant, dA equals to 1, so that the contribution of the hydrogenation step towards the induction period can be observed. If this step is low, induction period might be prolonged since the desired catalytic cycle can only start when the catalyst is in its hydrogenated form. As observed above, a slower initiation step can also cause an induction period, but the magnitude seems to be smaller compared to that caused by mass transfer limitation. The figure on the right presents a semi-logarithmic plot of one octane concentration versus time 
post-induction at various stirring rates, 0 to 1,200 RPM, with syngas introduced via either surface or bubbling aeration. In all cases, linear correlations were obtained, suggesting that the one octane conversion is first order in substrate concentration. The overall reaction rate is limited by interphase carbon monoxide and hydrogen mass transfer limitations until approximately 1,000 RPM, beyond which the observed rate constants are invariant and hence controlled by intrinsic kinetics. A comprehensive mathematical model that incorporates mass transfer and kinetic parameters for the catalytic hydroformulation of olefins was developed. The model demonstrated its ability to qualitatively predict plausible reasons for the occurrence of an induction period observed during the experimental studies and to provide rational guidance for experimental studies aimed at better understanding the underlying mass transfer and kinetic phenomena. The REACT IR was shown to be a versatile tool for investigating mass transfer coefficients for carbon monoxide and hydrogen transport in organic media as well as for in situ monitoring of catalytic reactions. Induction periods observed during one octene hydroformulation in previous batch studies are, redu are reduced several fold through intense agitation, implicating mass transfer limitation could be a causative factor for the occurrence of the induction periods.